All children of God are by destiny children of exploits, designed to thrive where others fail, to conquer the obstacles others fear, and to do the impossible. But notwithstanding how great a destiny God has in view for you, you'll need faith to make it a reality. Faith Moments, brought to you by Patrick Penu Ministries, would give you insight that would guarantee your victory over the forces of poverty, sickness, and disease. It will enable you stand in the midst of opposition. And now, Reverend Patrick Quayne. Hey, I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praise shall continually be in my mouth and in your mouth. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We are going to rejoice and be glad, irrespective of the circumstances or the situations that we find ourselves into we are not going to praise god just because we have everything we're going to praise god for what we don't have to get everything that we need how about that let's have a word of prayer heavenly father we are grateful to you for this day we are so grateful we are so grateful for giving us another day another day this is a divine selection selecting us to be among the living and not the dead therefore the living shall praise you and we are saying thank you for this blessed new day holy ghost oh we acknowledge you in every aspect of our lives and thanking god for the finished work of our lord and savior jesus christ amen saturate this platform and this atmosphere with your presence and let somebody's life come to be in the know of you in the mighty name of Jesus, and you have, if you are breathing, shout a big amen. Amen. Allison, God bless you, my dear. Long time. Where have you been, Allison? Where have you been? Well, I'm I'm so glad to know that you are among the selected. Uh, among the selected. Good morning to you. Good morning to every one of you under the sound of my voice. Good morning, good evening, good night, and good afternoon. My dear friends in um, India, it's evening to you there. Good evening to you, my friends in India. Uh, those um, in the United States, good morning, depending on where you are. In the East Coast, it's morning and on and on and on and on. In Africa, in Africa, the place called, what is that, the West Coast of Africa, um, the GMT time. So it's about uh, 2 p.m. your time. God bless you. Amen for whatever you are doing. Hopefully, maybe you are, it's a lunchtime over there or whatever you are doing. But I want you to know this is Faith Moment, a, a platform that brings you the understanding of God's Word to inspire you, to inspire your Christian life in God and for you to rise up, okay, to bring you out of the old teachings and that which will bring you to the clear understanding of the dispensation, the current dispensation that we are living in. And therefore, all you have to do is to invite somebody, all right, into this platform. Beloved, <coughs> excuse me, this is very important. Invite somebody, share this broadcast. This is not about that. It's not about giving you prophecies. It's about bringing you to the place of understanding of who you are in Christ and all that promises God has given. And I often say this, the promises have been given to you and it's yours. The timing of it is in the hands of God. So you must have that understanding. Beloved, with this understanding, you will not be struggling thinking that um, it is some demon and you're under a curse and that is what why things are not going for you in the pace you want to see it. God has given you the promises. You must, number one, receive the promises. And number two, understand that the timing of those promises to be activated is in the hands of God. Who gave you the promise, by the way? He did. He promised you. Are you listening? He promised you and he has the best time to release or unleash that into the, your life is in his hand so we must have an understanding so the whole thing put it together is your understanding and those who have understanding cannot be destroyed are you listening to me the book of proverbs proverbs says that wisdom wisdom will will guide you but understanding will keep you 
understanding will keep you. And so let understanding keep you in all your ways. Um, and definitely you will reach your destination. No, it doesn't matter. It don't matter who is going ahead of you. It doesn't matter how things is going. Trust me. Let understanding keep you. Of course, God bless you. Understanding will keep you. When you have understanding of the word of God and the promises of God, listen to what I said first. If you have an understanding of what God has said concerning you, if you have an understanding of what God has said concerning you, you ain't going to be worrying yourself about how everything is going fast, okay, past you as you may consider it. They're not passing you. It's time. Everybody and their time. Everybody and their time. Listen, the elders or the, or the senior ranks, okay, were there in the army of Israel when Goliath showed up to fight all the big people were all the you know senior senior brothers of of david they were all part of the army but god chose the timing for david the little one to come and pass them all to face the goliath are you listening the timing is in the hands of god don't fight anybody going ahead of you as you may see it don't worry yourself. Don't you worry because you will come and you will have your day. You will have your day. Are you listening? Don't, it's, it's not a competition. The life we are living here, it's not a competition, beloved. It's not. Now, if you want to see it as a competition, then you're going to be having the problems and the challenges. And, and I can tell you for sure that you will not be in alignment, you wouldn't live your life in the alignment of the plan of God. Are you listening? We saw that in the life of Sarah. Felt that uh, she, you know, she was behind time. So sometimes when I hear people say, oh, let us, let us pray for um, uh, delays. Let us pray, uh, you know, against delays. How are you praying against delays and the time is in the hands of God? How are you going to do that? Now, if Hannah, if Hannah or Sarah had prayed, well, they prayed for years before they received their time because it was in the hands of God. Are you listening to me? You cannot, beloved, get this thing straight. You cannot force anything out of the hands of God. He controls the time and the season. He, not you. If it was in your hands, then you can do whatever you want to do. But he controls the time and the season. Are you listening to me? And so don't be in haste in trying to, you know, to 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 get there and, 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 and all that. I mean, thank God for life and enjoy your everyday life in the very small way or medium way or whatever large way it all depends on how you understand it so understanding will keep you wisdom will guide you understanding will keep you so be kept i mean don't you don't you even want that that you are kept oh my wow, god bless you sir okay god will keep you by you understanding his word, he will keep you. So it doesn't matter. Listen, let those who think they are going ahead go. Your time is coming. Unless, unless you don't want to wait for the time. And, and you see that the chaos, okay, when Sarah, you know, came out of the alignment of God, the plan of God, you see the chaos that happened in her house by having Ishmael. And then when the time came for her to have Sarah, um, uh, to have um, um, uh, um, Isaac, now there was a problem because she was forcing the timing of God. Beloved, don't do that. When you have this understanding, See, understanding will keep you. My goodness, I'm telling you. I don't know why I'm saying this so many times because I want you to get it. Understanding will keep you. You ain't going to be worrying yourself anymore. See, I didn't I didn't used to know this. 
And I thought, well, you know, of course I was young. I, I need to, you know, be here and I need to do this and all that. Look, let me tell you something. It brought me nothing but headaches and problems. Nothing but headaches and problems. Nothing but headaches and problems. Now, do you want headaches and problems? Go for it. But I'm going to let you know what the Holy Ghost is giving to me. That the promises of God, they are yea and amen. Nobody can change it. Are you listening? That's something you need to understand. Whatever God has promised you, receive it, hold on to it. Because you see, this is why we started this segment of understanding the fact that we are not under the old law, the old covenant. All right? In, under the old dispensation, it's about our own effort and what we try to do to get approval of God. Okay? We, we, we try everything to be righteous in the sight of God. Beloved, we couldn't do it. Because under the old covenant, it was the, 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 the agreement that God had or the covenant between God and man. Man couldn't obey his through the Israel. Through the house of Israel. Man couldn't do it. God is a, a covenant keeping God. He kept his part of the bargain. We couldn't. But for God so loved the world that he created. Didn't want to destroy it. That was so beautiful that he created. Man in his image and likeness. He says, okay, I'm going to find, I'm going to, I'm going to give you another covenant that this time you should be able to, you know, uh, do well with it and come to the banqueting table of me. And therefore he sent his only begotten son. And watch this now. Whosoever believe on him will not perish, but have eternal and everlasting life. Now, today we want to talk about We've been talking about the Holy Spirit and why the importance of the Holy Spirit for you to understand who the Holy Spirit is. Many do not know nothing about the Holy Spirit. And don't be surprised that in the days of Jesus, I mean the days of, of, uh, of the apostles, some disciples didn't even know nothing about the Holy Spirit. And we saw that in the book of uh, Acts chapter 19 where we see that Paul was having a communication or, 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 or discussions with some disciples, the Bible says. We find out that those disciples were the disciples of John. Ask them, have you heard of the Holy Spirit? They said, no, we haven't heard about nothing. We don't know nothing about the Holy Spirit. He said, so unto who were you baptized? They said, unto John, of course. Well then, John came to baptize with water for the repentance. Now, therefore, the Holy Spirit, my goodness, the one who's who Jesus promised. See that promise? I'm gonna see, I'm gonna show you that word. Promise. Promise. Jesus says, It is expedient that I leave you guys because I finished the work that you guys couldn't do in the old dispensation or the old covenant. I came to fulfill it for you in Matthew chapter 5 and 17. Jesus says, I didn't come to do away. I didn't come to destroy the old covenant. No. The old covenant only showed you your sinful nature for which you couldn't help yourself. So I came to fulfill all that you were supposed to do that you couldn't do because no man was able to obey and fulfill that old covenant. Just take, it was 613 or so, you know, uh, commandments. Just take only even the, the ten. You cannot, you couldn't. So I came to do that for you. Jesus said that. And he did. We saw all that we, he went through. And nailed it all, took, took it all to the cross. And nailed it there. Went to, you know, uh, to be buried. Visited those down there. Preached the gospel to them according to the word. Even those who are in hell. Came out on the third day. Was resurrected by the Holy Ghost. And the same spirit that lifted Christ from the dead, the Bible says that he dwells in our mortal bodies now. But there's a promise that, I mean, Jesus gave before all this happened. He says, he says, I will, when, when I leave, I will send you the comforter. I will pray my father in heaven to send you the helper, another helper. And beloved, we see this helper arrive, arrive. Jesus told the disciples 
don't do anything. I'm going to leave, but don't go out talking about, about me until you have been empowered. You have received the power from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Until you have received that authority. Until you have received that authority. Beloved, I don't know about today, but if you don't receive that authority, if you have not received that authority, don't even think of going to try to preach the gospel. I'm telling you this. Because if it didn't happen for those those young boys then who thought that they, they could go in the image and in the in the in the likeness of what they saw, you know, the disciples do and all that, to go and and and, and cast out some demons. Well, listen to what happened to them. They were beaten by those demons. Why? Because they were not empowered. Are you listening to me? So that's the difference here. We're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit and how He's here with us now. Okay, I'm 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 releasing, I'm presenting him to you who do not know him. You got to know that the Holy Spirit is here with you, and you have to welcome him and accept him into your life. Hallelujah. Jesus says that he will be with you and in you okay go with me to the book of john see john we see that um um jesus is now telling the disciples that he's going to be leaving okay it's important that he leaves they know where he's going of course they were dialoguing with him communicating back and forth with him we don't know where you are going blah 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 and all that even though he has i mean sometimes you wonder this this disciples were they really seeing what was happening did they really understand the ministry of Jesus? I mean, it's, it's so interesting. Take your time and read the book of um, uh, John, the 14th chapter. It's very interesting. Hey, Pastor, sorry. Good evening to you in, um, in India. All right? It's very interesting. Take your time and read chapter 14 of John. Okay? But this is the area where in his, you know, um, uh, communication with the disciples as to where he's going, they know, they claim they don't know, and all that. This this very interesting area, I want to bring it out to you. And then we will get into the activation of the Holy Spirit and how he's, he's, he's here with us, okay? And how powerfully he's working things out for us, okay? So go with me to John, the 14th chapter. Stephen, God bless you, son. John, uh, John the 14th chapter. Again, please take your time and read from chapter one but i want to uh, for the sake of time i just want to give you just um you know give you a, a little juice of where i'm going with the segment of faith movement today all right we're talking about the holy spirit who is the personality you need to understand that he's here and you need to have him in your life verse verse um let's look at um verse 12 Let's read from verse 12. Victor, God bless you, Victor. Please do me a favor. Share this broadcast. Share this broadcast right now to your friends on Twitter, to your friends on Periscope, to your friends on the YouTube, to your friends on Facebook. Share it right now to everyone. Let them hear the word. Okay? Let them hear the word because you have believed the word and you must share the word. So we are spreading the gospel together. Let's do it right now. All right, verse 12 of John. John chapter 14, verse 12. Most assuredly, Jesus is speaking to them. I said to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. The greater works than these, he, that individual, will do because I go to my Father. I go. Jesus says, I go to my Father. Kojo, now you have become a Croatian. Well, God bless you. Croatia is a very beautiful Beautiful country. I love my people over there. Boris, are you you are in Croatia? Come on, let me hear you, Boris. But could you, you just just be where you were born into, all right? Stay there. You are not uh, Kojovic. <laughs> Don't even try. <laughs> God bless you anyway. God bless you. Kojo makes this this segment. Kojo and um, Joyce, they make this segment beautiful. They make this very segment beautiful. And I thank God and praise God for both of you, your life, all right? Joyce, of course, that's my dear heart. Oh, baby. All right. Verse 12 again. Verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Greater works, greater works than these, he, that individual, will do because I, Jesus, 
go to my father. Verse 13. And whatever you ask in my name, Jesus is speaking, I will do. I will do. That the father may be glorified in the son. Glory be to God. Verse 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. You don't hear that? I mean, these are the promises Jesus was given. If you ask anything. So you see, he didn't put any time frame to it. He's giving you a promise. You receive the promise. The time belongs to him. He says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Now, whether you will do it, you will receive it. You see it tomorrow. Instantly, he has, he has received your promise. Let me give you an example. 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 You apply for a job. Okay? You write to them, send them your, your, your resume and all that. Okay? They said, apply for this job. Now, you have applied. The timing for them to call you for an interview is in, is in the company's hands. It's not in your hands. Are you getting the revelation here? The time for them to call you for an interview is in their hands. And so you, you sometimes you get somebody say, you know, let us pray for delay, against delays and all that. Beloved, I was I was dealing with that, with somebody the other day, and and um, um, he says that uh, Pastor, uh, uh, pray for me because I I have I've applied for this particular job, you know, for for uh, for for I think almost a year. They haven't called me, and I said, just keep on, just hold on to hold on to it. If that is what you want, because if it's if that's what you want. You apply for it, right? So hold on to it. Just hold on to it. Are you listening to me? Hold on to it. I think maybe within 10 days later or something like that. 10 days later, I, I got uh, a message. Pastor, you will not believe. You will not believe after we prayed. They called me. This company called me. And um, I don't remember whether I responded to it or not, or I, I'm not even sure. But that's what it is, beloved. The promises are yours. Look at the promises Jesus is giving here. The time is in his hands. Charles, Charles, God bless you. Share this broadcast. Everybody, please, right now. The reason is you are also spreading the good news. All right. Verse, verse um, 15 again. No, verse 14. If you ask anything in my name, Jesus says, I will do it. That's a promise right there. Shout amen to that one. Come on. Verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandment. <laughs> if you love me, keep my commandments. Okay. Verse 16 says, And I will pray, watch this now, I will pray the Father, and he, the Father, will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. He will abide with you forever, not sometimes, but forever. Even the Holy Spirit, even the Spirit of Truth, the Bible says, whom the world cannot receive, they can't receive, the world can't receive, because the world neither sees him nor knows him. But you, you know him, for he dwells with you and in you. He dwells with you and in you. Talking about the Holy Spirit. He dwells with you and in you. Jesus says, I have to leave. Okay? Hey, Sandip. Pray for India. <laughs> India is a great country. The Lord is doing some things in India. And I, I'm telling you, very soon there's going to be some explosion in India. All those other gods made by the hand of man oh, are going to bow to the God, the Father of all. Are you listening? So don't worry, we are still praying for India. All right? Now, he says, Jesus says, even the spirit of truth, verse 17, whom the world cannot receive because the world neither sees him him, the Holy Spirit, nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. 
So, so this is the promise that Jesus gave. Okay? Even to the disciples. Because this is, if you read from verse 1 of, of chapter 14 of John, you see that this is a dialogue between Jesus and the disciples. Are you listening to me? So now, he says, he will be with you. Now, go with me now, okay, to the book of Acts. Acts. Let's see something here very, very interesting. Very interesting. So now the Holy Spirit is, is come. We want to see how the Holy Spirit is here. Because Jesus, remember, he promised. He has promised. He has promised, okay, that the Holy Spirit will be with you. Okay, now look at um, um, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Let's read from verse 1. Just follow me. Follow me, be beloved. Write these things down. Follow it accordingly. You will now come to the place of understanding of where you are and where the Holy Spirit is with you. Watch this. Now, verse 1. The former account I made, okay, this is Paul speaking here now, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus bore, began both to do and teach. Theophilus, I want you to, all that Jesus began to do and teach, verse 2, until the day in which he was taken up. Remember Jesus told the disciples, he has to go. He was taken up after he, through the Holy Spirit, through who? The Holy Spirit had begun command had begun oh sorry through the holy spirit had given commandment to the apostles whom he had chosen he gave this command we are going to see the command we are going to see it listen to this verse 3 to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering Jesus, we're talking about Jesus now. By many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, this was Jesus after, after he was uh, resurrected, you know, was seen. This is our evidence. This is eyewitness evidence of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Are you listening? Now, verse 4, verse 4 says, And being assembled together with them, Jesus with the disciples, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait. Watch this now. For the promise. Say the promise. Come on, shout, I have a promise. All right? He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. You remember, Jesus told them, don't do anything until you have received the promise. Before then, he says, I, will, I pray, I will pray the Father to send you another helper because I have to leave. I came to, to, to do what you couldn't do took all your curses, your burdens, your sorrows, your sickness. Look at the lashes that I received. And by his stripes, you were healed. Beloved, he took all these things, your poverty, your lack, all those things. He took, he took it all upon himself. Nailed it to the cross. Finished it all. Out there on the cross, he, he screamed out and says, it is finished. It is done. I've, I've come to do what they couldn't do. I've come to do it for them. It is finished. Alright? Now, we see that he is given the promise that by asking the Father to send another helper, the Father has sent the helper. Okay? Verse 4 again. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. But to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. Verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, 
but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. You will be baptized. Are you listening to me? You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, we see, watch this now, verse, therefore, uh, verse 6, verse 6, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, he responded to them and said, it is not for you to know. Times or season. It is not for you to know the time. Beloved, the times is in the hands of God. The promises are in your hands. Bishop Dallas, God bless you, my brother. The time is in the hands of God. The promises of God, they are yea and amen for you. So how, how do you think you can take the promises of God out of the hands of God? How do you think? He controls it. Do you see that? Verse 7. Jesus said to them, It is not for you to know. To know. It is not. It is none of your business. In other words, for the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. The Father has put it in his own authority. Authority. He has not given that authority to no one. Don't, don't. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Let us pray. Let's pray against you know delays. But from who? Are you kidding me? From who? Who are you praying against delay? From who? Oh, 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 Pastor. Yeah, but how? But. And uh, when 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 uh, 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 Daniel prayed, and 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 uh, the, the Bible says that the, the, uh, immediately God released uh, the the gift uh, or the blessings, and and he was held in. You know, but you can't divide the word of truth. That's what the problem is. But I'm not going there today because I don't want to miss my time of what I want to teach you today. Oh, dividing the word of truth, we'll get there. So, beloved, I want you to understand something by, by, by verse 17. And he said to them, Jesus responded, It is not for you to know the time or season which the Father has put in his own authority, in his own authority. But you shall receive power. Oh, we are coming to the place now. Get ready, get ready, get ready to receive this. But you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit come upon you. And you shall be then witnesses to me in Jerusalem. And in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And to the end of the world. Uh, or the world. You shall receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. When the Holy Spirit come upon you. That is when you receive power. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now, look at um, chapter 2 with me. Look at chapter 2 with me. Look at chapter 2 with me. Oh my goodness. Are you listening? Look at chapter 2 with me. Chapter 2 of the same book of Acts. Remember, they were told to wait, right? Okay, chapter 2. Look at this. Now, when the day of, of verse one, when the day of when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They all were together in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it pleased the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared on them divided tongues of fire, and one sat upon each other, all right, on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Remember, 
they have to wait until the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, come upon them. Then they will receive power. So here we see that the Holy Spirit came and gave them authorance, gave them authority, gave them power to speak, to speak, to speak with other tongues. And the, as the Spirit gave them authorance. Verse 5. Now there were many people sitting there, the were people in Jerusalem, uh, Jews, devout men from every nation under the earth. And when the sound occurred, the multitude came together and they were confused because they heard themselves, they heard them speak in his own language. Verse 7. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look at, look at, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Okay, now when they said all these things and they were, you know, um, 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 mocking at them and laughing, and it's like, whoa, these people may have because see, when you when you speak the the language of the Holy Spirit, okay, somebody who is not in the Spirit cannot understand that. First of all, remember, the Scripture tells you and I that the world does not know the Holy Spirit. Now, how can they even know or understand his language? The world don't know him. So they were laughing. Some of them said, look at verse 13. Other, others were mocking at them speaking, hearing them speaking in tongues, language that they don't understand. And they they were, they were, they, they are all, for, they, said, they, they said to them, they were laughing at them and they said that they are full of new wine. These people are drunk. Well, what kind of language is that? Doesn't make any sense. No. It doesn't make any sense to the world. Those who don't know the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Now, Peter then, who was part of them, spoke in tongues, now has received the Holy Spirit, stood up, verse 14, with the other 11 disciples, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known unto you. And listen to me. Listen to me. Verse 15. For these are not drunk. For these people, they are not drunk. As you suppose. Since it is only the third hour of the day. It's, it's, it's the third hour is about, uh, about uh, 9 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, God bless you. Night, nana, nana, yeah, God bless you. Okay, how can somebody be drunk? I mean, unless they are professionally uh, alcoholics. These people cannot be drunk. The third hour, that's about 9 a.m. in the morning. No, they are not drunk. But let me tell you something that you don't know. Because number one, you don't know the Holy Spirit. As scripture tells us, the world does not know the Holy Spirit. Beloved, if you are a child of God, you, you know you are a child of God, you must know the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, your power, your secret, I'm revealing your secret to you. Your secret is the power of the Holy Spirit when it comes upon you. Watch this. He says, verse 15, These are not drunk, as you are supposing, since it is only the third hour of the day, about 9 a.m. in the morning. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, verse 17, that it shall come to pass in the last days, says, says, says God, God said it, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. My goodness, my goodness. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on, the, on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. And they shall prophesy. So what you hear them saying, what you hear them speaking, they are not drunk. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has come to feel them. Are you listening to me? Beloved, I mean, it's so powerful as we're going to see some, going to show you some scriptures here. It's so powerful. Listen, 
Let me let me just announce this to you. Your progress, your success, your your fulfillment, your joy, your healing, your strength. Put it all together. Anything you can think of is in the Holy Spirit. Unless 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 you are of the world and you don't know him. But if you are of God, you should know the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? You should know the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he is at work. Jesus says, I am leaving. I have to leave. But, but I pray the Father to send you another helper. And this is a promise that we have received. And as we see it here, in this new dispensation, now you realize, hey, Bronxy, God bless you. You realize the Holy Spirit is appearing in this new dispensation. Are you listening to me? On these people now, watch this. Now, if you, if you, if you come to um, um, chapter 19 of Acts, okay? Let me show you something. Chapter 19 of Acts. Go with me. Let me show you something real quick. We'll come back to verse chapter 2. 19 of Acts. As I've been sharing this. Now, why, Pastor, why you keep repeating this? Well, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. You may have missed the hearing of the word of God yesterday. And now today you are here. So I'm going to repeat myself for you to get it. Now, the Holy Spirit if you are a child of God and don't know the Holy Spirit, your see your your empowerment, your your power to succeed, your power to break through is in the Holy Spirit. So if you don't know the Holy Spirit, there's a secret that is is waiting for you that you don't know. Oh, beloved, this is the place where the devil that you so pray, so give so much attention to takes advantage of you. Are you listening? You so, I mean, the, the, the first thing that comes out of your mouth when you start praying, I bind the devil, I bind everybody, I bind the He takes advantage of what you don't know. The promises are yours. The time is in the hands of God. Watch this, verse 19. Chapter 19. And, and it happens, while Apollos, Apollos, was a Corinth that Paul, watch this now, he was passing through, Paul was passing through the upper regions of, of, uh, of Corinth and came to Ephesus and finding there some disciples, he asked them, do you, do you receive or have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? Have you received? And they said to him, we have not even heard about the Holy Spirit. Look at it, verse 2. The disciple says, we haven't heard about the Holy Spirit. And then he said to them, so therefore, if you have not, into what then were you baptized? Into who or what then were you baptized? So they said to them, they said to Paul, uh, into, into, into John, we were baptized by John, into John's baptism. Verse 4, then Paul said to them, well, indeed it's true. John baptized you with a baptism of repentance through water, saying to to, to everybody that they should believe, okay, while she was baptized, they said they should believe on him who was coming after he, John, Jesus Christ. Look at verse 4, is there, okay? And but when so when they heard this in verse 5, when they heard when Paul said this to them, the Bible says that then they allowed themselves to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus because because they first believe. Now, you remember that John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus. John the Baptist was six months older than Jesus. They were cousins. Okay? So John came to, to, to make, to prepare the way the Bible says for Jesus, Jesus' ministry. Okay? So he, John, told everybody, I'm baptizing you with water, but whoever is coming after me, he will baptize you with, this, with the Holy Spirit. Now, what is verse 5? So when they heard this, they, uh, they allowed themselves to be baptized in the name of, of the Lord Jesus. And then Paul laid his hands on them. And then the Holy Spirit came upon them. The Holy Spirit came upon them. 
Watch this now. As it happens in the life of the um, uh, those in the day of Pentecost, it happens to these people again. Also here, watch this. The Holy Spirit came upon them when Paul laid his hand on the disciples and they spoke with tongues and they prophesied. Remember, when the Holy Spirit had come upon them, they began to speak in tongues and prophesy. And people around them, the world who don't know the Holy Spirit, were laughing at these people and making mockery of them and laughing and making jokes of them and saying, these people are drunk. And then Peter got up and says, they are not drunk. We are not drunk. Not at this early hours of the day. 9 a.m. in the morning. How do we get drunk? Do we look like professional uh, drinkers? No. This is what was prophesied by God. That is true. The prophet Joel. That is going to happen in the days that you people, you don't know. Are you listening to me? So now that the Holy Spirit has come to empower them, look at what is happening. Kumari, God bless you. Kumari, God bless you. Look after this. Now look at what is happening after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Kumari and Madhu, hey, husband and wife, <laughs> you flow together. I love this. The, the, the husband came and then the wife is coming. Hey, Madhu, the wife came and the husband is coming. Madhu, God bless you as well. Praise the Lord to you. All right. Now look at chapter 3 of Acts. Something is beginning to happen here. Exciting. Watch this now. Now Peter, the same Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. The ninth hour. Okay. The first time when we saw this, that they were laughing at them. Okay. Now they were laughing that they, they had, uh, uh, they were drunk and all these things here. Okay. This, this, this was what? The, um, the third hour. The third hour. That was about nine in the morning. Now, here, after that incident, watch this now. Peter and John went together to the temple at the ninth hour. From the third now to the ninth hour. Okay? To pray. To pray. Verse 2. And a certain man from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask for money or arms from those who entered the temple. Who, this guy, seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, they, she, he asked them for money. And fixing his eyes on Peter and John, he looked at, and uh, Peter, uh, Peter said, to the guy, look at us, look at us. So the guy gave his attention, expecting to receive something from Peter and John, as always. Then Peter said to the guy, to, to this uh, um, uh, guy, he says, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. This was a guy who is lame. He says, rise up and walk. Now, watch this now. In the third hour of the day, by 9 a.m., the Holy Ghost has come upon the disciples, my goodness, Peter was part of them. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the power. Now, in the, in the ninth hour, the third hour they receive. In the ninth hour, now that unto thee. And he took him by the hand, verse 7, and he lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankles, ankle bones, received strength. So, this guy leaping up, stood and walking, entered the temple with Peter and John, walking, leaping, and praising God. Hallelujah. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then, watch this now, they knew that it was he who sat begging arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were 
filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to this guy. Now, let me just tell you straight up. These people who were in the temple or the church or the sanctuary didn't know nothing about the Holy Ghost. Like the disciples of John. So beloved, the Holy Spirit is somebody you must know. It has nothing to do with the church you, you attend. Are you listening to me? I am very passionate about what I'm saying to you. The Holy Spirit has nothing to do with you going to church. It's all about your knowing of who he is. And if he's with you and in you. That is the difference. Look at the people here. They were all, first of all, they see this guy every day when they are going in there to pray. The hour of prayer. Oh, religious people. Religious people, let's it's Sunday. Come on, put on your best suit. The suit we don't see you wearing Monday through Saturday. We will see you on Sunday with it to come and show off. The shoes we don't see you wearing Monday too. It's like coming on Sunday if you are you are coming to 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 uh, to showcase because you think that Sunday is the day of uh, of showing off. Oh please. It's about time you change your thinking. This is what, listen, this ministry is to inspire you to understand who you are and the word of God through which the Holy Spirit is giving us. Don't tell me I got to wear a suit only on Sunday. Listen, I, you see the way I'm, I'm looking here? I go to church the same way. If I have to sit here, you know, and, and preach to you or teach you in a suit, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you also see me the same way. I don't need to show you off on Sunday. These people, they, they, at the time of prayer, they, they were, why were they surprised? Why were they surprised of what God has done? And right in the front of God's house, right at the entrance of God's house, something took place. And this guy was following Peter and John, praising God, into the house of God and those who were there were all amazed Bible says watch this now watch this verse 8 and all the people saw him walking and praising God verse 10 then they knew that it was he the guy who sat begging arms at the beautiful gate of the temple and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him verse 11 now as the lame man who was healed, held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. They were greatly amazed. So when Peter saw them, watch this now, when Peter saw them, it, he responded to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us? As though by our own power or godliness, we had made this man walk. Are you getting this? Verse 13. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of our fathers glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate. When he, Pilate, was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you instead of him. And killed the prince, you killed the prince of life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. And his name through underline this word faith see listen you got to you got to activate your most holy faith i'm telling you in the holy ghost you got to activate your most holy faith in the holy ghost in the holy spirit verse 16 and his name through faith in his name through faith in his name has made this man strong 
whom you see and know. Yes, yes, the faith which comes through him has given this man this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Yet, now, brethren, I say to you, I know that you did not, you did it, you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. What you did concerning Jesus, you did it in ignorance. You didn't know him. Okay? You didn't know him. Now, for the sake of time, go quickly with me, read the rest of it, come to chapter 4. <clears throat> Come to chapter 4 of, of Acts. Now, as they spoke to the people, the priests, as Peter and John was talking to these people, the priests, okay, <clears throat> first of all, these are church folks and other people as well. Whilst they were he was still talking to them, the priest, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed. They were disturbed that they taught Peter and John taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Oh, so God bless you, son. The priests, they were disturbed and that Peter and John, these people were preaching to the people about Jesus and his resurrection. The priests of all people, not the world, though, not the world who don't know Jesus, not the world who don't know the Holy Spirit, the church people, the priests, the pastors, these days we call the pastors. Look at verse 3 and they lay hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already in the evening. Of course, it's the ninth hour. In the ninth hour. So in other words, they arrested them, Peter, and put them in prison. However, verse 4, many of those who heard the word believe. Many of those who heard the teaching of Jesus and his, res and the re his resurrection believe. And the number of men came to be about 5,000. When the Holy Ghost come upon you, you will do what you couldn't do before. Beloved, if you are a child of God, that is the difference. It doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Therefore, if you can't do something right now, the Holy Spirit is not in you. Remember I said to you earlier, the promises are yours. The timing belongs to God. Jesus said that it's in the control and the authority of the Father. Verse 5, and it came to pass on the next day that there, there are rulers, elders, and the scribes, as well as an ass. Okay, not this one, not this current one. <laughs> an ass, the high priest. An ass, the high priest. Let me clarify that. Some of you from this country, you know what I'm talking about. As well as an ass, the high priest. Caiaphas, John the Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked them, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, what's this now? This is, this is very important, beloved. Today's segment is showcasing the power of the Holy Spirit. Watch this now. Verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the, of the people and elders of Israel, if we did this, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to the helpless man, by what means he has been made well. Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 
whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you hold, before all of you. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. For there, for no, there, sorry, verse 12. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. By which we must be saved. In other words, there's no any, there's no any any other name by which we must be saved. Watch this. This is very powerful. I know my time is gone, but I'm going to give you some extra grace. Watch this now. <laughs> extra dose. Verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, watch this, and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men as themselves. They marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Do you see, do you see what, what di differentiates you from any anybody else? When the Holy Ghost come upon you. Listen, there's nothing called fear. When the Holy Ghost come upon you. See, see just see yourself, okay, uh, of course you, you can't do do the work of the Holy Spirit. But but when the when the Holy Ghost come, things change. Are you getting the revelation here? They re they realize that these people were not educated. Beloved, <clears throat> it doesn't take education. Remember, Peter was a fisherman. He ain't been no he ain't been, been to no school. Peter ain't been, been to no school. He's just a fisherman. All he knows is fish. Catching fish. Are you listening? Catching fish. But they were this educated, so-called educated priest or preachers or pastors. Okay? With their with their long regalias and long sermons and, and all these big words and all this thing, they realize that whoa, 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 wait a minute, there's something going on here. Wait a minute, these people are not educated. So how are they able to even do this? Because you see, to them, miracles must happen through them only. Beloved, you you need to you need to get the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? This has nothing to do with you. You want to be a follower and not receive the the promises of God for you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Verse thirteen again. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men. They untrained men. They marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. They, they can't say anything. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. Now, they, they asked Peter and John and this um, uh, man, this layman, to stand outside, go, you know, they took counsel by themselves, saying, what shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a notable, watch this now, a notable miracle has been done through them, through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us seriously threaten them. That from now on, they speak to no man in this name. And they call them back 
and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus when was the last time you were so bold to talk about Jesus to to everybody else the Holy Spirit beloved he will do a thing in you if he dwells in you first of all let me draw your attention back to this we are no longer living in that old law that old dispensation the laws in which we couldn't keep that was actually written and given to the house of Israel we the Gentiles were not even part of it just put yourself that we are in yet we couldn't do it we couldn't obey it the old law of thou shall not the thou shall not thou shall not thou sh thou, excuse me thou shall not we couldn't scripture tells you and I that if that old law was faultless there was no fault about it there wouldn't be no reason for God to institute a new covenant if that old covenant there was no fault with it the fault that was with it was the fact that we couldn't keep it it was only to 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 put a mirror in our face to show us how sinful we are that we couldn't obey those commandments and all that in our own deeds deeds works okay because the 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 the, the answers to that old law was when you do the good in your own effort and your deeds you receive a blessings from God if you disobey any of those commandments curses come upon you and if you break one you have broken all that is as simple as that go back there and check it yourself it's as simple as that now because God so loved the world that he created he didn't want to mess everything he did. I mean how do you build a house that you love and then you want to uh, for because somebody came in and um, they, they they pee pee on themselves so you want to break and destroy the whole house and, and do it no he gave his only begotten son the only person who could obey that law fulfill the whole thing in and out yes and no of it all okay took your place and my place to do that that's Jesus the one whose name was mentioned and everybody was going crazy and you see what the, the preachers were telling Peter and John don't ever go out there and teach in this name anymore they were afraid of the name beloved the name of Jesus the name of Jesus the demons that you are afraid of they are afraid of the name they are afraid of the name of Jesus do look in my eyes you see how serious I am they are afraid why are you afraid of who is afraid of you why are you afraid of who is afraid of you and that which you carry unless you don't know what you have Paul says in 2nd Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 he says examine yourself and see don't you know that Jesus lives in you unless you you don't know unless you unless you don't know you are disqualified my time is up but beloved the Holy Spirit when he comes upon you as we see Peter couldn't do all these things but when the Holy Spirit has come upon him 5,000 people even believe in the name of Jesus and then he was arrested and because of the lateness of that day the ninth hour they were put in there and the next day they brought them before you know all the priests and and all those you know so-called priests and all this so-called religious you know uh, holy adult kind of self people and finding to find them in, in whose capacity were they doing this 
as as simple as ABC. They told them, Peter and them told them, the Jesus whom you crucified and God raised him from the dead. He has left and sent us the Holy Spirit. Ha! The Holy Spirit has come. You see, my boldness is from the Holy Ghost. You see, the authority in which this man is healed is, is by the Holy, Holy Spirit. It is not by our own, our own works and our own deeds. We don't have nothing. And indeed, you people yourself, you know that we have not even been to school. We are not educated and we are not trained. We, haven't, we, we have not been trained like you people to be religious. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. We have not been trained to be religious like you. Beloved, this is why I say this. When you train a child to be religious, you create a clever devil. Oh, I'm going to post this today. When you train a child to be religious, you create a clever devil. You see how devilish they were. The Bible says that he said to them, and they called Peter and John and commanded, well, first of all, watch this now. He said, verse, look at verse, <clears throat> look at verse, um, verse uh, 17. Verse 17. It says, but so that what Peter and John had done doesn't spread any further among the people, they said to they said, let us seriously threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name. You see what the clever devils does? They were clever devils. We will not kill them, but we will put fear in them. Fear is not of God, beloved. God and God said, He Himself said, I have not given you the spirit of fear. So why do you want to even entertain? Fear is a liar, and fear comes from the devil and his demons. And so when all this fear things is put on you, that some kind of old lady with no teeth in your family background is chasing you, it's up to you to run to the Holy Spirit or believe what you are hearing and live your life in fear. Beloved, you can exempt yourself from those in the house of God who knows the Holy Spirit or join them, the multitude who do not know nothing about the Holy Spirit, but only the sermons of fear and the teachings or the preachings of fear. I remember many years ago, a well-known preacher sat in my office sat in my office and to, I was not a preacher then I wasn't a pastor I've always been a businessman and he, he says Patrick if you don't scare the people listen to me today I'm saying it I've said it to one or just one or two people he said if you don't scare the people they will not come to church and they will not give if you don't scare them and I said Wait, wait a minute. I thought the scripture says God has not given us the spirit of fear. All he said was, well, you, you don't understand. I guess he was right. I didn't understand why he was saying that to me. You have to scare the people to give? Are you serious? Beloved, you're giving. See, I have come to realize this. Your giving must be your love for God. Not to scare you. Listen, I, I, I guess that is why maybe some of us don't have that kind of money that other preachers you see them have. Because I don't know how to scare you. I don't know how to do it. I don't. But I would rather, I would rather not even learn it. Because my, my blessings come from God. Hallelujah. My job is to inspire you with the word of God, bring you to the place of understanding and be kept. Understanding will keep you, beloved. I am not called to scare you just to bring money. Then I don't know the God who's called me. And if you think,
think you have money and now you know I than me and you want go ahead it's a matter of time beloved because understanding is keeping me and the race if you want to even call it or see it as a race it's not for the swift of you who think you can speak fast and scare people fast for them to bring money and all that it's not for the, for the swift beloved I need the Holy Spirit empowerment to do what you can't do the Bible says that they scare them he says let us scare them let us scare them so that they don't go around because this name there's a power in this name glory be to God there's a power in this name that if we don't stop them everybody will be healed if we don't stop them because bef look at this 5,000 people have given have given their lives to Jesus Bible says that 5,000 people believe when Peter spoke 5,000 believe they believe 5,000 beloved they didn't go Peter and John didn't go to no shrine no demon no house of any filthy you know image God to get any ammunition or any spirit to to preach the gospel they stood there by the boldness that came upon them as a result of the Holy Spirit that is the difference tomorrow God willing my time is gone I'll show you somebody who wanted to buy the Holy Spirit <laughs> he, he, he saw the power of the Holy Spirit and he wanted to buy it he thought it was for sale it's all about all money money is good I need some oh yes but beloved I'm going to be twisting your hands and all that if you believe that this platform this ministry has been a blessing to you and you want to financially support for us to expand as right now I've been telling you we need uh, this this particular instrument um, equipment to be able to put other windows on there for you so that you'll be able to see other things whilst I'm bringing you the Word of God all right if you want to do that support us it costs the, the, the price for it is $2,500, $2,500. Support us to do it, to get it. That's it. I'm not asking you to bring me money so that I can go on vacation. If you want to bless this ministry, you want to bless me personally, God bless you for that. But you, I want you to do it because you love God. You are giving it to God. First of all, I want you to understand that. Your giving to God must be because you love Him. Not because somebody has to force you or, or, or slap you on the face with some, some level of fear or some message of fear that if you don't, God will not. Who said that? That was the old covenant. That was the old dispensation. You do and then God does. If you don't do, God doesn't. That was the old dispensation. But we are living. Jesus has come to fulfill what we couldn't do. And we are now in he has brought us into this new covenant and this in this new covenant is about you believing and receiving what jesus has done for your life and then allow the holy spirit to take over that's it and so if you don't know jesus if you don't know him you must know him now right now you must that would be the listen this is the best decision you've ever made in your life by accepting jesus as your lord and savior so let me pray with you right now if you want to receive him and if you maybe be going to church all this while and, and you you didn't even know now that i, I have exposed the, the holy spirit the what the holy spirit and then you must remember people were in, in the in the temple and the way they were marveled to see what has taken place in the life of this guy who they always see when they were when they are going to church they always see him but they never have the guy other than just throw some coins just throw some coins i don't believe anybody gave to the guy what really cost them i don't think so i don't think so they just throw some coins arms 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 you know what arms is 
just some leftovers. Just give me something to just keep me going on. That's arms. But beloved, if you want to give me something, give me something that causes you. It won't, that's what, that's what God says. You want to give me something? David says, Lord, I will not give you anything that will not cause me. Why? Because you are my source. It, it came from you anyway. And like I often says, giving to God doesn't make God any richer, beloved. Don't fool yourself and don't get any, don't get it twisted. Giving to God don't make God any richer. <clears throat> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, say after me, Father, in the name of Jesus, I am a sinner. I see myself as a sinful person. I come before you right now. Forgive me of my sins. I accept Jesus and the work he did on my behalf. And so I accept him as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, live in me. Write my name in your book as one of your people. Holy Spirit, I invite you now into my life. Take control. And show me what I must know. In Jesus name. I pray. Amen. Beloved if you just pray that prayer. It's as simple. But it, it's very powerful. In the book of Jude chapter 1 verse 20. Scripture tells you and I. To, 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 to activate our most holy faith. Basically that's what it is. Praying. Encouraging yourself. Building yourself up. In the most holy faith. Activate your faith in this prayer you just prayed. And activate your faith in receiving the Holy Spirit. You will see what happened. I mean, yesterday I got one of uh, the best testimonies. Oh man, I tell you. You know, I've been in the ministry for about 20 years now. And um, sometimes you wonder if people are really being blessed by the few people you teach. The word of God. Many years down the line yesterday I got a call from one of my girls and I didn't even know. And she confessed that all this time she was in church. She never believed in the Holy Spirit. And as mother she never believed. And anytime we pray in the in the Holy Spirit she closes one eye and open it and she'll be laughing within herself to see other people who are praying. Yes, she told me that she confessed that yesterday. Well just two months ago She's now in one of the Arab countries. Two months ago, the, the, she, the Lord visited her in a special way. Just pondering on some of the things that I have taught her in the past. The Lord visited her. And as I'm talking to you now, oh, I couldn't believe. She called me and then she said, Daddy, can I, can I pray? And she burst out into Tongues. My goodness. I said, Florence? Whoa! See, the seed was sown then. I'm talking about more than 10 years ago. The seed was sown. Now it's manifested. The harvest has come. And she was on and on give, telling me some people she prayed for and um, they, they have even received uh, um, uh, the, 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 the wife the, the wife and the husband. Now they, the wife is getting pregnant. And I said, wow, that is what I'm talking about. When the Holy Spirit comes. Beloved, you need the Holy Spirit. Ah, my time is gone. Past gone. I will not apologize, but I want you to know that you don't have no trouble. Please write to me. Let me hear from you. All right. Let me hear from you. And um, if you want to support this ministry, please go to the website www.patrickquainoministries.com. There is a place that you see a, a, a place where I say donate. Click on it. The rest of the information. It's yours for you to do it. Or if you want to send maybe instant or you know fast way of some financial support, you can do it through this um, 
app called the Cash App also uh, with this number 914-572-9816. You can do that also. God bless you, Bishop um, Jones, my good brother. All right? You can do that as well. In the meantime, please share this broadcast to all your friends, your loved ones, your neighbors. Okay? We are instantly, instantly, this broadcast is instantly on, on the Facebook, on the Twitter, on the Periscope, on the YouTube, instantly. But we want to get this gadget that will even help for you to see the scriptures even as we, you know, I'll be preaching to you or teaching you and all that. We can, we, it will also give you the, you the ability to make an input by typing things and, and all those things. We want to buy this, this in, um, equipment. And, and it's twenty five hundred dollars, two thousand five hundred dollars. I didn't send twenty five thousand. Uh, if you want to send twenty five thousand dollars, God bless you. There are other areas of this ministry that we can utilize your financial contribution. Yes, you know normally I didn't say this, but somebody asks, "Do you receive con con financial contribution?" I say yes. And beloved, it's tax deductible. This ministry is five hundred one c three. All right, it's tax deductible, and so you can give your financial contribution, and um, uh, it will be a blessing to you. It's a good soil to sow in, and I know you've been blessed, even as we bring you faith moments this and every morning, Monday through Friday, from 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, 9 Central, 2 p.m. GMT, and wherever else you are looking at your time. God bless you uh, till I hear from you. Same time tomorrow. I want you to know you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all that getting, get understanding. God bless you.